East. Okay, so first of all, East Timor is located in Southeast Asia, occupying the eastern portion of the largest and easternmost island in the lesser Sunda Islands, Timor, which they share with Indonesia. Right at the convergence of the Banda, Savu, and Timor Sea, just a quick hop away from the northern coast of Australia. Might be wondering why East Timor is split up this way and why they even have an exclave, or why they occupy the east side, like wouldn't it be easier if they just controlled the entire island of Timor? In the simplest way I can put it, Portugal came, but then the Dutch came, they drew lines, and the Dutch were like, bye, and then Indonesia came, and then Portugal was like, bye, and then things got real messed up for two decades until finally, yay, East Timor. The country has two official languages, Portuguese and Tetum, a native language which actually has various dialects in itself. However, there are over 30 regional languages and dialects spoken throughout the country. West Timorese people have some similarities, yet there's a reason why they deliberately choose to stick with Indonesia. For one, just like East Timor, the entire East Nusa Tenggara province of Indonesia is predominantly Catholic. Yes, and it has been proved already that colonialism doesn't serve anybody, doesn't serve any country. They start arriving uh, since Monday, six, seven boats together, very close to our border. No, they are not there just for fun, you know. Uh, they're preparing a with Indonesian warships closing in on East Timor, the Fretland Party declared independence from Portugal. The new government made José foreign minister. He was assigned to raise support for the fledgling nation. As he boarded a plane, Fretland forces headed for the hills to prepare guerrilla bases. From 1974 until 1999, Timor-Leste experienced 25 years of conflict. These years were a painful and divisive time for the nation and its people. The story of East Timor is a story few know about, except those who have lived through it. Six foreign journalists who were there as Indonesia attacked were executed by the Indonesian military. Australian TV correspondent Greg Shackleton sent this report the night before the frontier town where he was visiting was seized by the Indonesian troops. But under pressure from the United States, the visit of the delegation had been called off. Three days later, with the world spotlight removed, the army stormed the Motayal, Dili's main Catholic church, and killed a young man named Sebastio Gomez, who had taken refuge there. And then came the morning of November 12th, the two-week commemoration of Sebastio's funeral. A memorial mass and procession were planned to lay flowers on Sebastio's grave. After the mass was held at the Motayal, people, young and old, came out into the street, and in a land where public speech and assembly had been forbidden for over a decade, they started chanting. The Indonesian army converged in two places. Hundreds and hundreds of troops uh, coming straight at the Timorese. When they came, They opened fire on the people. We pride ourselves, and I think properly so, in standing. People in the back, I could see their limbs being torn, their bodies exploding. There was blood spurting out into the air, uh, the pop of the bullets uh, everywhere. And it was very organized, very systematic. The soldiers did not stop. They just kept on shooting until no one was left standing. A group of soldiers grabbed my microphone and threw me to the ground, kicking and punching me. At that point, Alan threw himself on top of me, protecting me from further injury. 
The soldiers then used their rifle butts like baseball bats, beating Allen until they fractured his skull. As we sat on the ground, Allen covered in blood, a group of soldiers lined up and pointed their M16s at our heads. They had stripped us of all of our equipment. We just kept shouting, we're from America. In the end, they decided not to execute us. The soldiers beat us, but we actually had received privileged treatment. We were still alive. They kept on firing into the Timorese. We were able to get onto a passing civilian truck, went into hiding, but the Timorese who had been with us there on the cemetery road, uh, most of them were dead. Inside the cemetery walls, Max Stahl, a filmmaker on assignment with Yorkshire TV, had had his video camera running. The soldiers began at that point to encircle the entire cemetery. I saw the soldiers as they gradually moved towards the, the middle, picking out people who... behind their backs um, and they were made to look at the ground and if they looked up they were immediately beaten usually with a rifle butt. Max Stahl was filming near a crypt in the middle of the cemetery. Some of the wounded and those too scared to run were huddled inside praying. As Stahl filmed he buried his video cassettes in a fresh grave. Then he was arrested by the troops. Whilst I was being interrogated, I observed. Smuggled out of the country. Alan Aaron and I had managed to leave East Timor a few hours after the massacre. In the hospital on Guam, we reported what had happened to dozens of newspapers, radio, and television outlets. I don't know. You don't know. And in the midst of a defiant pro-independence rally in a militia heartland, an independence leader said the local militia had already told him the refugees were going to die. You will see uh, on the 1st and 2nd of September, it means that they will attack for the people, especially uh, the refugees that right now are living in the residence of... Of all the accounts of brutality to emerge from recent weeks in East Timor, the most chilling has come from here. Reports that 100 of those we'd met in the churchyard in August had been slaughtered. In Suai, some believe the toll was even higher. There's blood everywhere, there's blood on walls, there's blood on... Um, uh, bamboo scaffolding, there's blood on... In many cases here, it appears the killers didn't bother with bullets. In an emotional address, Guzman brought his followers to tears as he called on them to remember those who died fighting for the independence of East Timor. Guzman also praised the people for their courage during their long struggle and urged reconciliation between the pro- and anti-independence factions. Guzman slipped back into the country aided by Australian troops just a few days after the Indonesian parliament endorsed the results of East Timor's independence referendum. 
Itala lori buatana tola, italori reis makedelis in lolo hoiden ya brani. Fono, fono asoro colonialismo. Fono, fono asoro evana me hane hagiden ya po. At the cessation of hostilities, the Timorese people realized that they could no longer be divided by the problems of their past. In order to build a better future, they would need to study and learn from the lessons of their history. The people of East Timor recognized the need to establish a process to help heal the wounds of the past. But many people felt that something more was needed, something broader, deeper, and more accessible to ordinary people. We had 24 years of occupation by Indonesia. A hundred thousand to a quarter of a million people died. Some, many, many died of starvation caused by the war, by neglect, by the occupying power. Some died of killing. When we achieved uh, freedom, independence, uh, we said, past is past. We have uh, much, much to do to uh, save those who are alive, to look after those who are alive. We honor the victims. We try to help their relatives, those who are alive, those who lost parents, brothers, sisters, cousins, friends. But priority is to look after those who are alive. We have to heal the wounds of a traumatized people, traumatized from divisions of the past, traumatized by their experience, but we also have to heal the wounds with Indonesia. If we want secure borders, if we want to be integrated in the region, to have a normal diplomatic relation with all, so the way Indonesia relate to East Timor and the way we relate to Indonesia is a great example of how countries in conflict uh, can overcome uh, the past. I, 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 I will say this, I dare to say, there are no two countries in Asia that have a better relationship than East Timor and Indonesia.